Okay, welcome to another eBay unboxing. And so here is an item that is useless, as tits on a bull. Useless. I never use these things, but I like them. I collect them. Don't know why. All right, so let's get it open. I uh, actually wanted this because of what the seller claimed. Now, the seller claimed that this is silver. I highly doubt it, but um, nonetheless, I think I paid... $49.95 for this. That was the opening bid. I sniped it. Oh, let's uh, take a quick uh, view of, we'll do a segue of me sniping it. There. We're almost there. When it gets to the 12, that's when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the trigger. All right. And it placed my bid and I'll be back. Two seconds. One second. What happened? Let's see. As you can see, I was going to go to $110.99. I was lucky nobody bid on it. Does that uh, happen frequently for me? No. There's always some jackhammer who comes in at the last second besides me. And, uh, oh, all right. So let's get this open. And we'll do this in fast motion. The seller said these were silver. How true is that? I don't know. They said tested for silver. That's what I want it to be. I'm hoping. What are these? These are antique opera glasses. They're a little dirty. I have to clean the lenses. But these are repousse. And if you look, repousse, like a raised type of metal work. And they, I mean, they feel very light. Now, if this was real silver, this would be extremely heavy. And so what I think we have here is aluminum, aluminum antique opera glasses. And uh, uh, what's great about these, these have what's called prominence. And what is prominence? It's basically when you, you could actually date back something or you can attribute it to a certain original owner. And what's cool is, let's go ahead and I don't want you crack maniacs to see me. There's a name and I can't even read that because my camera sucks. Uh, what is the name? Hold on. Let's zoom this. Let's zoom in. Hold on. Let's zoom in. All right. It says, I think that's a, my hands. I can't even hold them actually uh, steady. Bessa? Is that Bosa? Uh, jackhammer? I have no idea. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I think I'm having a, a hairball. Wait. Rosa, Rosa, Jack Heimer, <laughs> John Jekyll, Jekyll Heimer Smith. His name is my name too. I don't know. 18, what is this? 18, 1894, 1897. Wait, wait, we got to get a zoom. 1894. Okay, so now we can definitely date these. Wait, Bosa. The person's name is Bosa. Is there such a name? Bosa, Jekyll Heimer. I don't know, Pinkelheimer, Pinkmuller. I can actually Google this and look this person up if I can figure out the damn name. All right, 1894. All right, so these are actually French, and we can see on the eye cup, La Reine. And uh, yeah, we're going to find out if this is silver, if this is bullshit, uh, because sometimes people try to, you know, sort of identify something as something it isn't just to get more money. I'll be right back. I'm going to get my silver, my silver testing fluid out. Okay, why am I wearing white gloves? It's because I just polished them. These are solid silver. The cans were solid silver. Tubes, solid silver. Eyepieces, solid silver. The trim, solid silver. And uh, the reason why it's so lightweight, because if they made these cans really like heavy duty silver, it would have cost thousands upon thousands. Even the eyepieces, everything about it, it's a thin, like bendable silver okay so you had to be very careful with a pair like these back of the day these were not cheap these were very expensive now fun fact let's find uh, out more fun facts about this now look how oh my god look how beautiful these are okay now look how shining and gleaming i thought they were aluminum and actually if they were aluminum it would have been an interesting thing because guess what back in the 1800s aluminum was a new precious metal it was actually considered a precious metal. 
it was easy to chase or to, you know, put designs in it because it's soft. And the fact that it was just a newly, uh, basically a new, a new type of mineral or some sort of type of mineral that they, you know, discovered, it was worth more than double of, of the gold's price. Aluminum was unaffordable. Yes, that's right. Aluminum. We'll find out more about that in a moment, which I was fascinated. I could not believe that aluminum was more than double the price of gold. And so silver even. <laughs> and so if these were aluminum and they were from like the 1850s, 1870s, 1860s when aluminum was not mass produced. It was so damn expensive to get aluminum in bulk. It was more precious than the most precious gems which is absolutely crazy. So if you find a pair of like 1860s, 1850s, 1870s opera glasses made out of aluminum or some product made out of aluminum, that was when that was more precious. So whoever had the object was filthy rich. Now around this time when these were made, these are engraved with what year? 18, was it 1894? Uh, silver, I mean, aluminum was just starting to become more mass produced and more affordable but it was still quite expensive. And uh, so if these were aluminum, and this was like the 1870s or 1860s, 1850s-ish, these would be worth thousands and thousands of dollars more, more valuable than gold, a gold, a solid gold pair. Isn't that interesting? Now I looked up the person's name, cannot find this person anywhere on the internet. That last name doesn't even exist. It's Pinkle, Pinkle Mueller. Let's check this out. The, the person that owned these were either Jewish or German. Okay, that's what I can surmise. The name Rosa does not sound like a Jewish name, but I could be wrong. Let's get in there. Let's get in there close. And again, that name. If you want to help me look it up, if you're one of those genealogists, I would love it. So let's get in there close. Very hard to. It looks like it says, wait, Rosa Pick. Could that be, oh wait, P-I, now I'm looking at it differently. I can't, I, I see Mueller, M-U-E-L-L-E-R, but P-I, is it P-I-U-C-K or P-I, oh crap, uh, is it P-I-N? P-I-U, wait, P, oh, Puck. Maybe it's Puckle Mueller. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to Google. Free, the greatest free information that you can get on the internet is on a website called Find a Grave. Now, Find a Grave doesn't charge you yet. Now, things like Ancestry.com, oh my God, they're such bastards. They take your, your information, by the way, I want to tell you guys. Now, I put a photo of my mother on the internet on Findagrave.com, okay? And they ended up taking my mother's photograph, putting it on Ancestry.com, and, uh, they said, found a, a relative of yours. You know, they sent me an email. Click on this. Is this your relative? Yes, it's my mother. A photograph I put of my own mother on the website. And then when I clicked on her picture, it said, to view this photo, $99 a year. So they steal your information. And they make money off of it. So let's try Puckle Mueller. Now, I tried Pickle Mueller. Nothing came up. And I don't even think, yeah. Uh, I found a lot of information on the internet through Find a Grave, but we're not finding this person's name. Okay, nothing, nothing comes up with this name. Now, I tried Pickle Mueller, right? P-I-C. Nothing. This name does not even exist. It is the rarest of names. And did you mean? No, I did not mean that. I want you to look up Pickle Mueller, you bastards. Yeah, there's no such thing. All right, so let's talk about aluminum okay because i don't know i thought this was interesting as shit that this was this like if i would have had this in the 1830s 1820s i would be a freaking billionaire like this tiny little scrap of aluminum that i just took from my roll of aluminum foil yeah um i feel guilty even wasting this <laughs> after reading about it okay so let's find out aluminum one of the most common metal in the earth's crust uh, almost twice as abundant as iron uh, yeah, basically, uh, has been used since the Greek and Roman times as an, as an astringent. Yeah, an astringent for the face. And, uh, very interesting. Okay, so no one succeeded in isolating aluminum until a German chemist extracted a few flakes, just a few flakes in the 1820s. And then when he did that, 
Aluminum became an instant hit. An instant hit. Uh, people adored Element 13. Yes, I learned that in school. Element 13, remember that? Oh my God. Going through chemistry and all that other shiz, not fun. Uh, okay, so they adored Element 13's color and luster. Look at the luster. Which reminded them of the sparkle of gold and silver. A brand new precious metal was born. Okay, so aluminum became more precious than gold and silver in the 19th century because it was harder to obtain. Basically, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Okay, the French government once displayed Fort Knox like aluminum bars next to the crown jewels and Emperor Napoleon III, no, not the Napoleon, his nephew, reserved a prize set of aluminum cutlery for special guests at his banquets. And uh, basically, the most uh, revered guests got the aluminum cutlery. And uh, the less favored guests used gold knives and forks. Can you believe this is? Okay. The United States, to show off its industrial pr uh, prowess, 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 can never say that word, even capped the Washington Monument with a six pound pyramid of aluminum in 1884. And then suddenly the aluminum market suffered a mighty crash. <laughs> Entrepreneurs in the US and Europe finally figured out how to separate aluminum from minerals cheaply and also how to produce it on an industrial scale. And boom, then it became like a piece of shiz. You know why I went um, ape shit over those opera glasses for forty nine dollars and ninety five cents because these are silver repoussé. This one being sold for five seventy five. I mean, really, that's why I had to have them. I was just like, oh shit! I hope nobody else sees that and uh, wants to buy them. Here's another pair, three hundred and ten doll hairs. Oh, get out of here, Ruby Lane! Fuck off! And uh, here we go, sterling silver. These are nineteen oh one. Um, and they look very heavy, but they're really not. They're lightweight. Why? Because they couldn't make them really heavy duty because then the price would be way too high. Although these were expensive when they were being made. Let's check out some more. And here we go. three seventy five dollars for sterling repoussé floral opera glasses. three seventy five. dollars Now you know why I got a good deal at what I paid. Here we go. Seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Wait, yeah, seven seventy-seven eighty-two. Uh, silver, baby, silver. And now you you see what I'm saying here? Yeah, let's uh, rare case antique French silver and brass opera glasses. One thousand nine hundred and fifty doll hairs. And here we go. Here's another pair, very similar to mine with the rosettes. Now mine were very very strange looking like that type of um color until i polished them they ended up uh, getting the luster of silver these being sold for 199 dollars so i have a large collection of opera glasses i don't use them i don't even go to the opera but the most common ones you will find are these mother of pearl types these types with a uh, mother of curl a uh, mother of curl oh geez louise mother of pearl cans and uh, the more expensive ones out of those Mother of Pearl types will be the ones with the lorgnette sticks that fold out and open up like this. Those ones will sell for a lot more money. Now, having said that, uh, these are very common. Although the ones with the sticks are worth much more, um, they're more common than the silver ones. So the silver ones are worth more. There's another pair of sterling silver, $8.50. Okay, so whoever this person was, Rosa, Wrinkle Raka, Raka Ruma Raka, I don't know. Uh, yeah, she had money. She had money because uh, these would have probably cost her equivalent in today's money of about $900 to $1,000. Okay, so these were given to her as a gift with her name and grades in it, and she had money. Okay, the lady, she was oozing with money. I'd like to find out who she was. Is she Rockefeller? Is this lady Rockefeller? Oh, my God. She must uh, be like a distant cousin of Rockefeller. I don't know. But these were very expensive in their heyday. And uh, why do I collect them? I don't collect them because I'm not, trust me, I'm not going to use them. I'm not going to a Broadway play anytime soon, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'd rather watch Paint Peel than do that. 
but um, I collect them for their art, 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 artistry, art, uh, architectural structure. Um, yeah, those bells are totally, the bells going off, notifications are totally distracting me. But I collect them for their art history, their beauty. Um, no two are the same, basically, although they can look alike, especially the Mother of Pearl ones. Yes, those two um, types, like the Mother of Pearl uh, with the, the handle, the lorgnette handle, or without. Uh, yeah, those those are actually a dime a dozen, although some of them can sell for quite a bit of money with the lorgnette stick. If you have the one with the folding lorgnette stick, those ones will sell for several hundred dollars. Ones with enamel, French enamel, or painting, hand-painted designs on them, those ones go for big bucks, okay? Solid gold, yes, I do have a, a pair of solid gold ones in my collection, believe it or not, with repousse, just almost identical as these, except for their gold. And uh, yeah, so this lady had money, and I like to add these to my collection for the beauty, because they don't make things beautiful like this anymore. Do you see anything being made like this, like on a grand scale, without it being mass produced in a factory with no heart, no soul, just basically churning out the same thing one after another, like a cookie cutter? No, these were actually craftsmanship went into this. Somebody spent time, although they did have machines back then, you know, working and turning the metal and punching in the designs, people actually had to sit and had to put these together piece by piece by piece by hand, not by machine. So this is why I love things like these because it's the art, the art of the antique. You will not find anything like this anywhere else in today's day and age. You will not. And I will never go to a Broadway play. So they just go on display. They stand out. They look really pretty in my china cabinet. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Aluminum was once a precious metal that was more precious than gold. Isn't that insane? All right. So I hope you learn something every time you watch one of my videos. I like teaching. I, I would have loved to have been a teacher of uh, antiques if they ever had a class called Antique 101, I would just love to sit and show really cool objects off and just talk about them for hours and hours. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next unboxing that comes from eBay. These were a great score at $49.95.